Hey everybody, Radaman here, thanks for tuning in to Starbound, a vanilla Let's Play tutorial series. So M in the comments suggested that I cross things off that I've found on my list of things to collect, so I've done so. Pick it up where we left off, um, I went through the glitch uh, land there and didn't really pick up what I was supposed to, so I'm going to actually beam down and go grab that before I go too far. Now, I am going to be tasked with finding the glitch uh, sometime down the line, but uh, while I'm here, I might as well grab what I need. Ooh, ouch. How's that feel? Alright. Traversing. Let's see, I can cook some stuff. That might be helpful for later. Hey, where'd that vendor go? Ah, oh, there you are. There, I protected you. Lend you a hand. 25, 30. So the chest plate, I think I already talked to you. Chest plate is the same. Quality, just cosmetically different. I skipped a chest. So there's also some other items that I should be on the lookout for. Uh, chief amongst them would be sand. Sand is really easy to find once I find a, uh, a desert world or savanna or something that just has high high percentages of sand on it. Uh, but sand is going to allow me to make glass. And glass is a key ingredient in a lot of the things I'm going to need in order to proceed through the game. Some mushroom food. Ouch. Still hurt. Trying to sell me some mushroom food. I thought the, uh... I hope I'm going the right way. I could also sport the new vehicle, but the vehicles are only really great to use if the... if you don't have obstructions and, uh... the terrain is relatively flat. The controls, W points up, S points down, and spacebar jumps. Uh, but sometimes you're... Oh, like this case sometimes you're gonna find pits that um, just do a lot of damage to your vehicle all right so here's the glitch what is my purpose here I'm here to steal some of your armor that's it and I'm out of here so I analyzed uh, well here let me go... So, of the lush planets, we've explored both of these. We started on this one. Uh, we've explored this one, I believe. Yep. So, the only one left is Sluhorn Muster over here, which we've not explored. So, let's go over there to see if we can't get some of the things we're looking for. Uh, and then, let's also put this uh, armed display armor, which... Of course, is the fourth item on the left uh, that we needed to find, and we will cross it off the list so that um, uh, next episode. All right, so here is the last sort of lush planet that I could search for floor and artifacts, or in this, or for sand, or for cotton. So let me explain the sand and cotton. In order to mine your own fuel, you're going to need to go to moons that don't have an atmosphere. So let me try to find one. Here's one. So as you can see, there's fuel here. Crystal Urchis fuel. Uh, to mine this up, we need a breathing apparatus to provide oxygen so we don't suffocate. In order to get one of those, we're going to need glass. In order to get glass, we're going to need sand. So there's the list. 
So let's beam down and see if we can't find cotton for the teddy bear mission, a florin village for the main mission, or sand for our breathing apparatus, and a bunch of other upgrades too. I'm not going up. I'm just going through. Oh, there's some cotton over there. So this looks hopeful, at least for us to find cotton, which is good. And the additional cotton, I will dig up the rice. Oh, so this is a duplicate. Ah, oh, interesting. This is a duplicate planet from the one I started on. So this if I unlocked with core fragments, would lead back to the Ark. Just like the planet we started on, which means there's also the mini-boss that I skipped, uh, and likely it is in the other direction. Um, but I've committed to this direction, so, so shall I go. Okay, so that was more cotton. I could use the vehicle, but... With my sprint ability, I'm pretty decently fast on foot. Also, oh, shouldn't forget I can turn into a matter manipulated ball, which allows me to traverse the terrain way faster than if I was a big, bulky vehicle. some additional cotton over there. Two cotton fibers from that. Ooh. Ow. That hurt a lot. Let's not fall into uncharted depths as a general rule of thumb. Oh, speaking of which, here we are, falling into uncharted depths to break the rule of thumb. More cotton. Well, I like this planet. I haven't found uh, necessarily signs of life of inhabitants, but... Uh, God knows, it's had a lot of cotton. So that will prove pretty useful. Alright, my character's getting a little hungry, so... I'm gonna fry out some mushrooms. There we go. Bonus health. Right on. chests to explore. Some throwing darts from that one. And pixels from this one. Okay, well that wasn't worth it. I'm not all that interested in killing a bunch of monsters. 
I'd rather just focus on the missions at task and at hand. Because the 5 or 10 pixels that the average monster might give is just not a whole lot compared to, let's say, finding a random cosmetic that we can sell for 500 times that or something like that. 50 times that. Ooh, a little lamp in the middle of nowhere. Shut on, little buddy. Huh? Hello. You have... Nothing that interests me. But I will sell you this hammer. I guess. You're welcome for your transaction. But for your safety, do not follow me. So here we go. This is the same sort of mine shaft that we started with. Uh, but this one is new. And in episode one, I decided to dig to the center of the world for my core fragments rather than do this uh, mini quest. So I, instead, this time, am going to do the mini quest. All right, I can't watch them kill a vendor. And we're getting manner manipulator modules and all sorts of ores. There's a lot of reasons to do this. And we're also going to get tons of weapons. Uh, this These initial sort of starter caves uh, have a huge variety of weapons so that you can experiment with what you like, what your preferences are. Or at least that's what I, th I, I think why it's so full of weapons. Could be wrong, but that's what I always assumed. So here is the mini boss. Not these guys. He's over on my left. There you are. And now that I've leveled up a little bit, or not so much leveled up, that would be a misnomer. I have stronger uh, equipment than I would have the first time I set foot in here. Uh, he is not much of a challenge. So that's that's the mini boss I skipped. But uh, I am definitely about all these tech cards and many manipulator modules. In fact, we just got enough to unlock um, the three by three tiles. But I'm thinking I'm going to save up for the next level of digging, as I find that to be a little bit more useful. Ooh, a cosmetic backpack. They're always a good sell. More weapons. Now, we are on a, um, a sort of, this is a, a lower difficulty world. So the weapons I'm finding here are almost certainly not going to outclass the ones I have equipped. Which means, um, you know. It's unlikely that I find anything that I'm going to use, but with that said, it's still nice to have them to sell, or just to see what their special abilities are. If you're unfamiliar with the variety of special abilities that weapons can have, um, seeing what a level 1 ability looks like can offer insight as to what it will be like when it's level 10 or 6 or something. I should say 6, not 10. But, uh, when it's higher level. Alright. So this is sort of the extent of the dungeon. I'm going to be him up out of here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is let's collect this cotton fiber. And process some of the cotton that we've got. Do I have any cotton stored? No. So we have three out of the four co cotton fibers that I need. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to grab my hoe. I'm even going to dig up my cotton here. Because uh, I'm going to replant it. Let's expand this farm a little bit much as I can. Grab the hoe and till it. Uh, 
All right. And the first things I'll put down are these cotton plants. There's five cotton plants. And then uh, two rice. Where the sail is, I can't grow. So I'll just dig that back up. There we are. So this is my farm. Um, next up, the watering can. That should already be in my inventory. So let's put the hoe away. And now we are growing some cotton on our ship and some rice, actually. And that will help us with the quest to make the... Uh, the little quest to make the bear for the lost teddy. Uh, but let's return to Natsuki. Uh, she asked us to collect her iron ore and I sort of took off. Actually, you know what? What is the quest rewards for this? No, I'm gonna abandon that. Okay. So, I obviously did not find anything Florin. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is to go down to the Ark and buy fuel to get myself off this planet. Uh, off this solar system, I should say. So if we head over... And how many tech cards? I have seven. Uh, one more. Gets me a new technology. So I'm going to head over to the Infinity Express and I'm going to buy 100 fuel for 500 pixels. And let's sell some of the weapons uh, that I don't really intend to use, just to free up some space. Sell some furniture that I don't need. Okay. So now that I have 100 fuel, that is going to allow me to travel to another world, or another solar system. So first things first, we go to the FTL drive fuel hatch, and then we put the 100 fuel that I bought into the hatch and this is going to allow us to switch solar systems so i've pretty much tapped out all of what this solar system has to offer me which is why i'm leaving so what i want to do to find florin uh, artifacts uh i'm looking for gentle stars with forest vegetation but i also want to go somewhere that has a desert actually was this a desert oh this is a desert hold on never mind i'm not going to jump yet this already has a desert. I overlooked that. All right, so I'm going to head to the desert world because I need some sand. And it should be absolutely plentiful down here. So I need sand to make glass for my Enviro protection pack and uh, to improve some of my um, crafting tables and the like. So I'm going to just get a unhealthy amount of it. And let's see what this little... little Bedouin has to offer or what he wants to say. If you like sand, I'm in the right place. Oh, well, you know, it's coarse and it gets everywhere. I do have uh, some ores to smelt. A teleporter core and a desert scarf. Oh, a lantern stick. Oh, that's real nice. So that's real nice because uh, I can put this on my back here. I don't, and it generates a light source for me. As you can see, it's uh, a little bit more luminous. Now there's multiple ways to get uh, light sources, but this is uh, this is one of the uh, easier ways 
early game. Now, funny enough, this light source becomes moot pretty quickly, um, but I'm not going to spoil as to why yet. Ooh, a tuck card. An Explorer's Lantern. Oh, well, here we are. Now I have an Explorer's Lantern 2 instead of a flashlight. Flashlights are direct directional, so I'm going to keep that. But um, some pretty nice finds. Some high-priced cosmetics again. That's going to help expand the wallet. And some weapons. Let's just dig our way out. Alright, I'm going to... This world has been nice to me so far, so I'm going to continue searching it. So, some really nice ores. More nice ores. You know, I didn't even talk to you. I just robbed you. He says he's used to these conditions. Another tech core and some decorative statues. Ouch. <laughs> Oops. Let's go ahead and craft some additional ropes. I kind of used up a lot of mine. Oh, look at this! This is also oil that we can harvest. Now, I was originally, I got the meta manipulator module to allow me to harvest oil so that I could make this Explorer light pack on my back, but I got gifted one randomly, so that's not going to be all that necessary. But when you, uh, when you go into oil, uh, it slows you down. You also have to hold your breath. Okay, that's probably plenty of oil. Now again, uh, this is a lower level world, so the weapons I get here are probably not going to have great stats. No. Actually, that mace wasn't terrible, but... Oh, pretty good pixels. And another Mentor Manipulator module. Most excellent. And a tech card. Uh, looks like some radioactive barrels. Which are um, cosmetic only in nature. They're not actually... There's not actually... Uh, well, they're sort of radioactivity. A little bit, but not really. There are some worlds later in the game that are, uh, like, toxic and and will harm you, but uh, it's not specifically called radiation as far as I, I know. I keep falling into the oil. Excuse me, little guy. I did not sign up for being punched in the face. This might be a good case for the vehicle. Let's see about that. I don't know if the vehicle will be able to traverse this faster than I can, but probably. Oh yeah. With a little bit of damage here. No, oh, much faster. Come, buy things. Uh, well, you don't have anything I want. What about the silver helmet? This silver helmet is the same stats as my, uh, my previous helmet. Oh, but my goodness, we have a Florin world uh, on a desert, because that makes sense. So, uh, if you recognize this statue right here, it's because it's on my things to collect list. So, before I go anywhere else, Oh, as you can see, sand is literally piling up on the ground from this sandstorm. There we go. We got the Florence statue. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me bring the Florence statue over here where no one's going to look. And scan it as well. There it goes. Alright, so now we have this Florence statue. I'm going to set it apart. 
And now that we're in a floor in town, it's time for me to scan everything. Oh, come on, don't punish me for cleaning out the sand. They think they own it. Everything green is going to be particularly important for me to scan. So focus on the green stuff first. And if I bring up my find clues to locate floor and artifact here and track it, every time I scan something green, it's going to push the progress bar a little bit further. So definitely focus the green stuff. Although this town might be quite small and not have a lot for me to scan. We'll see. Also wouldn't be a terrible idea to uh, pick up quests from here to see if I can't get crew members to join me because my ship is getting a might bit crowded. There's some additional clues. Oh, I didn't even reckon I didn't even see that you were home. Yes, I am robbing you. Don't worry, it's for the good of the galaxy, I, I promise. Whole bunch of clues there, as you can see my uh, progress bar rocketed. And I'm just reading the codexes. And, you know, robbing them. Like you do. Oh, so this big statue here, pretty important. Yep, pretty important. Some of the uh, some of the green items are going to. Oh, there it is. I have now collected everything I need to all of the cultural items, the floor and cultural items that I need to analyze where I might find the floor and artifact. And I did it. Get it in a lush forest? No, I got it on a desert world. Uh, there is a lot of RNG involved here. Random number generators, luck, whatever you want to call it. We just got uh, enough modules for the second generator. I'm going to continue searching this town, though, for quest givers. I wouldn't mind doing some Florin quests, if they'd offer any. I haven't seen any offered yet. This is not what a typical Florin village looks like either, mind you. It's usually um, like giant treetop houses and the like. But this is what it would look like in a desert. So I just managed to find a desert one. And there's another Florin statue. Maybe it's indicating that this is the edge of town. Yes, it does seem to be the case. Well, then I'll rob what remains. Cool. Alright, so we have a lot of stuff to do. First things first, we want to make a breathing EPP and upgrade what we can. So, um, even before that, let's go ahead and water plants. Now this cotton here, mixed with tungsten, is going to set me up with my next tier of armor. So it's going to be important to keep this uh, this farm productive. Okay. Going to the forge, I am going to make glass. Uh, let's make 50 glass. This will take a minute. And as you can see, the upgrade to the primitive furnace is uh, tungsten, coal, and glass. So it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more coal in order to get my printed furnace uh, improved. Coal's pretty easy to find. It's one of the most plentiful. I'd call it an ore. They treat it like an ore, but it's obviously not an ore. It's a fuel source or whatever. Alright, so there's all that tungsten. So now with all of the uh, materials that I have, you can see up here what it takes to improve. So... I'm not finding titanium just yet, but I will. I do have everything for the furnace. Uh, I obviously don't have stuff for the forge table or for the wooden. Here, 
we can improve this, uh, and let's do that. The inventor stable, upgrade. So this new adventure stable is going to give me some new options. Uh, I'm going to get a fossil station that allows me to collect. Um, it allows me to collect fossils for display. Uh, a kitchen counter, which is uh, something I'm going to craft immediately. A refinery, which allows me to turn ores into pixels. Uh, as you can see, refinery is used to produce raw pixels from ores, and um, an apothecary, which is for uh, healing items. I can also make the apothecary. I just need five empty bottles. And there it is. So the kitchen counter uh, allows me to cook more complex dishes that were previously, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do. The issue, of course, is a lack of physical space. My apothecary here probably does not have a location, a valid location to exist. Uh, but here is the new kitchen. And there's going to be a ton, ton, ton new recipes. A lot of them based upon uh, the things that I've seen in the world. So like I've found Cocoa Pods, or I found um, Abba's Mingo, or Coffee Beans, so on and so forth. And some of these provide benefits. Um, when consumed, it will give you like strengths, temporary uh, boosts. So, um, uh, that's good. Okay. And then, of course, uh, what we're really here after is the breathing EPP. And there it is. I built the breathing EPP, which allows me to breathe uh, in, atmos uh, in um, scenarios where there is no oxygen available. Here's the breathing EPP. And the sad thing is, uh, for me to use it, I can't use the lantern stick. You know, it's one or the other, not both. All right, so the weapons... So all the cosmetics that I don't need are going to be sold, all this stuff here. Just doing some light organization. So all that stuff down there is going to be sold. I also have enough tech cards to improve my tech. So let's go to the tell shop and do a little bit of selling and improve my technology. And then Esther, of course, wants to talk about the cultural stuff I found. So my late tech, I want to get multi-jump. I find multi-jump to be very, very useful. It allows you to jump three times... And that's going to be very, very helpful to allow us to mitigate fall damage and stuff like that. Uh, the furnishings was island furnishings. All right, so here's the telemart, and let's go sell all this stuff. Net me a pretty penny. And we'll talk to Esther. Wee. <laughs> All right. The last clue is what we needed. Uh, she knows where the Florin artifact is. So I was given a reward of a one-hander weapon and now she's going to tell me to go to the ceremonial hunting caverns and complete a ritual to get the artifact and my sale is given the coordinates for that artifact all right up up and away we go Next thing I'd like to do is the Florence statue. We'll add to our ever limited space of storage. Um, adding storage would be a wise idea. I just don't. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to wait. Uh, we have a bunch of plants that are ready to be watered again. And this cotton is going to be crucial in order to allow us to upgrade our armor. 
if we take a look at the uh, anvil here, the next set of stuff is obviously made of cotton. I can actually build an entire next set, uh, but what if I did that right now, uh, I wouldn't be able to finish off the uh, the teddy bear that I promised to make. So this teddy bear needs one more cotton wool, which means just harvesting one co or just a few cotton out of there. But it also requires 20 woven fabric. So I'm going to start crafting up the 20 woven fabric now so that I can't use up my plant fibers for something else later. Yeah, I really only need one more cotton fiber and I have the teddy bear. All right, so if that's the case, where to next? So now that I have the breathing EPP and I'm wearing it, uh, I will show you how to mine up your own fuel. I think that's going to be important. So we're going to go to a moon that has the uh, the fuel on it, the crystal Urtius fuel. And um, it's sort of an ongoing joke that people find this nerve-wracking. I don't personally, but uh, it is sort of like the, um, the Mario mission where you have like a wave of lava chasing you, something like that. I'll explain soon. All right, so here we are sitting over the moon making sure that we have the breathing EPP on, and we do. So when you teleport down, you're gonna be on a little moon that has basically just one resource and is haunted. So if we see up here, I'm spooked. The spooked is the hunting bit. Um, so these moons have the Ursius fuel and crystals that you can find uh, all over as you can see, right? I'm detecting entities attracted by the moon's deposits. Um, interest will grow the more I collect. So essentially the way this works is this, this, uh, all of the moons, these are special type moons. They all have these fuel crystals and there's pools of uh, liquid fuel um, towards the center of the, or, you know, towards the core of the moon. Um, but as we collect it, a ghost, uh, here he is, is going to hunt us and try to kill us. Why? Why not? I don't know. I, I forget the lore reason for his existence. And the, the more you mine up and the more you collect, the faster he moves, or it moves, I should say. I'm not even going to give it a full gender. Um... So this is one of the ways that you can gain uh, fuel. The other way is the Infinish Shop. Uh, gain fuel for your ship. Um, and here as you can see, where's the fuel? Uh, here it is. Now later on when you've got uh, like grappling hooks and um, a much bigger health pool and you know uh, better illumination around you uh, collecting is not so tough you can actually get way more than you need most of the time but if you want to play it safe you could just mine the surface like this uh, but there is definitely a benefit going towards the core so let me see if I can't find a large cavern opening and what's probably most important is that as deep down as you go you have a way to get back up quickly so that if you're being chased by Mr. Ghost um, you can outrun him so if I'm digging a uh, a tunnel down. I'm gonna want a tunnel that isn't like straight down so that I can I can get out quickly for when he inevitably catches me or gets near me. So here we go. We've dug through the moon dust. We're in a moon rock. And so far I haven't even collected enough fuel for a jump, but I've mostly I've not really focused on uh, fuel collection so much as I have just showing you. So here's some liquid fuel that if you have your mana manipulator upgraded to allow for the collection of liquids, boom, liquid fuel. 
And we are going to want to create a way to get back out. And as you can see, the fuel down here, a lot more plentiful. And the, the stronger your manner manipulator is, uh, and the, the, you know, the faster you can collect this stuff. So I'm not, I, you know, I could spend all day coming back here and collecting, but I think what I'm going to do is just go for after one more liquid pool. Oh, and there's Mr. Ghost Boy. Giving him a name takes away his power. Hello, buddy. Are you? There we are. All right, so I have enough. As you can see, I've taken a little bit of damage. My health bar is a little lower because uh, he, you know, attacked me or whatever. He exists. We're high enough that we can just jump out through the hole. And that is how to collect fuel. You just need the breathing EPP first. Without it, uh, you'll suffocate. Oh, joy. You'll die. Um, so here, we just stick the liquid fuel in. And as you can see, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. I get more fuel for the liquid fuel. And then we can also stick the, uh, or uh, solid fuel, and stick the liquid fuel in. So we have almost enough for five jumps, which is a pretty significant amount of travel. And that, my friends, is how to steal fuel from a ghost. <laughs> okay. Next up, I am going to try to finish the teddy. So let's see, is there any other planets that we have not explored? Here's a friendly ship. I guess briefly I can show the uh, the celestial interference scan areas. So let's do this with a mech. So these are uh, mech specific. They might have you going on foot for bits of it. But here's my mech with the cannon and drill. And... This is also a way to collect the salvage interface chips and the salvage power couplings. By the by. This is one of the ways that you would collect it. And there's a whole sub part of this game where you improve your ship and you infiltrate uh, enemy bases and the like. So these guys are uh, like little mines. Don't let them get too close. And then the blue thing pickups that you see me getting are energy to power up my mech. Um, other things I'm getting here, as you can see, a salvage power coupling, which is one of the items that I had marked down to collect. And these things are required for the, um, uh, for improving your mech and, and, and content like that. And ultimately, oh, there is a salvage interface chip. Ultimately, uh, I am due to ouch, uh, go to towards the green arrow. I am tanking way too much. So as you can see, my power level is about a little bit over half because I tanked a lot. But one way to get it back up is just to not tank and destroy some of the things that you can destroy. Now, there's another um, tactic, which is just to essentially ignore everything and beeline straight to where the green arrow says for you to go to. 
And if you ever get into trouble, you can always just beam it out. You don't necessarily need to fully kill everything. In fact, it would... I would say that's probably not even a good idea, just given the, the length of time it would require. It is not all that productive. And you'll eventually hit a facility like this, where you can get out of your ship. Uh, hello? I don't know why they're not attacking me. Oh, it's like a little sanctum. Oh, it's like a <laughs> little, little guy in his farm. Okay. Interesting. I was not expecting this, but sure. Hmm? Hello. He's a space farmer. With a secret passage. Are you a smuggler? Some thruster nodule. Yep. So if if we wanted to, again, a little reminder, collect the salvage interface chips and the salvage power couplings for missions um, coming into these into space like this is the way to do it. So let's get back to the ship. And I am just about out of time. So next episode, we are going to finish up the uh, teddy bear quest. And then we're also going to make ourselves a nice set of cotton tungsten armor. And probably then head to the hunting grounds. Uh, unless, of course, I find... Yeah, no, we'll probably head to the hunting grounds. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. If you have any feedback for me, do drop me a line in the uh, comments below. Catch you next episode. Adios.